so I feel like I have enough hours in Rise and fought the monsters enough to actually make a tier list. And of course, everybody has kind of like different things that they take into consideration when they make these lists. But I kind of try to take into the account the design of the monster, the fight, the weapons and armor, the gear you can make from it, you know, I, I try to take all of that into consideration. But we all know that there's going to be a little bit of bias sprinkled in there as well, but let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with Great Izuchi, um, I, and honestly we're going to be starting this off with a bang because if you watched my Gen U tier list, you know that I have a soft spot in my heart for Great Macau. I think it's probably the best starting monster in a game like in a monster hunter game and uh really does a good job of teaching somebody how to play monster hunter by not being too aggressive and to learn the monsters uh, attack patterns and everything like that but honestly i feel like great izuchi might be right there with great macau if not a little bit better because the attacks that it does have the, you know the spinning tail attacks the ones where he whips the tail and does a little flip like it, they all have tells and you know you're taught to read those tells and kind of go off of that so you know he's going to do that spinning flip and he's going to have a window there open for you to punish and it does everything well when you're talking about the basics of Monster Hunter and the fights themselves. The foundation that you need to build to get further through Monster Hunter, Great Izuchi does a very good job of doing that. So absolutely S tier for this bad boy. Lagombi. Um, Lagombi... Lagombi is one of those ones that I feel like there's a lot of people that think Lugambi's cute, this and that, and whatnot. I am not. I am not one of those people. And I mean, like, I feel like that's kind of his saving grace, but, uh, yeah, as far as Lugambi goes, uh, I don't really like the fight. I don't think it's fun. Uh, his attacks, stuff like that, his moveset, really, it just, it's kind of annoying to me, more than anything. Especially his little zoom attacks. I mean, the tell for it as far as like him just kind of like sitting there and waiting, like, I I don't know. I just don't. I don't like it. I don't like the moveset. I don't like the fight itself, but some people do, and I feel like you're going to be really disappointed, but I'm definitely going to be putting Legombi in the D category. His weapons are cool. You know, some of the weapons that you can make with his, like the Insect Glaive. I like the Insect Glaive a lot, and uh, I mean, his armor, I could take it or leave it, really, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Wagambi's just not my cup of tea, and if he is, I get it. But for me, it's gonna be a no dog. Arzuros. Now, Arzuros, uh, he kind of shares some of the moveset with Wagambi as far as his little butt shake and sit down on you and, you know, the arm swings and whatnot. But I do like Arzuros with, like, his charged up, like, super swings. Love that. And then the way he charges, you know, he kind of just runs at you and he'll turn around and come back. I like it. I like it a lot. I like his moveset in comparison to Legombi. I definitely like the design way, way, way more. I mean, Legombi is just weird to me. I'm sorry. He's just weird. But Arzuros, big old bear, and his tongue all flailing and hanging out when he runs. I love it. I love Arzuros. He's adorable. Um, even his, his hunting horn is so dope. I love the look of his hunting horn, so that definitely plays a pretty big part of where I'm going to put him as well. And even his armor. I, li I like the look of his armor too. But yeah, I think that Arzuros, he's another monster that's really good at uh, teaching the fundamentals of Monster Hunter, and I think he's a pretty good beginning tier monster, and I think we're going to be putting him in the B category. Great Baggy. Now, if I had to be honest, when we're talking about like all the greats that are in Rise, I think Great Baggy actually is my favorite design. I love the way that Great Baggy looks, his color, everything, the design, fantastic. And I mean, he's another pack monster type of fight, and those can get annoying at times, but I do like Great Baggy a lot. Uh, the sleep ailment, I love ailment weapons. Sleep weapons are some of my favorite weapons for sure. Especially if you have a coordinated group, it can be really, really awesome. But yeah, as far as Great Baggy goes, awesome design. Even some of the weapons that he has are pretty dope. So yeah, I'm thinking that I'm going to have to put Great Baggy in the B category as well. Yeah, Great Baggy in the B category, that sounds about right. It really is heavily 
because of his design. Because, I mean, like, the fight itself, I mean, obviously, all the greats are supposed to be pretty easy, but, I mean, like, that still factors into where they rank on the tier list. But with Great Baggy, a lot of it has to do with his design and everything, so, yeah, I feel pretty good about him being in B. Tetranodon is probably one of my favorite monsters in Rise. I have to say, I mean, like, just from his design point, he's an awesome-looking monster. Even, like, the, the colors that, like, really earthy tones and everything i feel like it fits exactly what they were going for with him and the fact that you know he's eating rocks and this and that it all works perfectly but the thing is i really really like the mechanic of when he does you know start to eat more in that mode that he goes into one of the reasons is because i feel like that's a bit of a hint well i wouldn't say like a hint towards but improves the chances that we might see something like Zamtrios come back into Rise, so that also makes me happy. But, as far as talking about Tetranodon himself, very fun fight. Love the sumo wrestler-esque movements and everything. His moveset is awesome. Super, super cool. And I really feel like this monster was just done well all around. Not a super huge fan of his armor, the whole tanky look and whatnot, but... I like his weapons. I really do like that, especially the bow guns. I love the design of the bow guns, but um, honestly, just on the design of the monster in the fight alone, top tier for sure. And honestly, on that alone, I'm definitely going to throw him up into the S category. Very fun fight. Very cool design. They really just did well all around with Tetranodon. Definitely S tier for me. Kulu Yaku is definitely a monster that has personality, and I mean, like, I feel like that's pretty tough in a monster hunting game to really have the monster's personality kind of shine through. But I feel like we all know that Kulu Yaku has that dopey, kind of cute, adorable personality. But the thing that I don't like about Kulu Yaku and Rise, which, if I'm wrong about this, by all means, let me know in the comments below, but it seemed like in like Worldborn, anytime that he had the rock in his hands and he hit you, you were like automatically stunned. Which, you know, he's not a tough monster in the first place, but I feel like that was a good thing. You know what I mean? That was a good thing for him to have. And in Rise, I didn't really notice that. I noticed that anytime I got hit by the rock, like I didn't immediately get stunned or anything like that. But even the moves that he would do if he was like slamming the rock, throwing, whatever. But in Rise, I feel like they pretty much could have named it like Great Kulu Yaku because he was just kind of, I don't know. I mean, he, taking away that stun thing, I mean, I feel like you really reduced him to not too much. But like I said, the personality shines through. I love cute uh, Kulu Yaku. I mean, he's adorable and cute, but I think he's probably going to go in the C tier. Great Ruggy is a monster that I never really got to experience until Rise came about, so it's pretty fresh for me. I would have to say that I really enjoy Great Ruggy, and honestly, like I said, the great in this game, I liked pretty much all of them. I, I can't lie, I really did. Like, I enjoyed all of them. And then Ruggy, he, how I was talking about personality with Kulu Yaku, I feel like his look and everything like that, uh, it, it just feels right. And his armor is absolutely fantastic. One of my favorite moves, honestly, in Rise is his little puff of smoke, the poison smoke, and then he just leaps right through it, that little side bash. Probably one of my favorite moves, honestly. I really like it. But Great Ruggy with the awesome armor, even his design I think is really cool with like that poison sack, whatever toad looking thing. I really do. I like Great uh, Ruggy a lot, so I'll put him up with Baggy at B. Royal Ludroth, I don't know, this one for me, it's kind of hard to explain, but I just wasn't feeling Royal Ludroth in Rise. In Gen U, I really did like Ludroth. I think it, I, it was really, really good in Gen U, especially for like a lower mid-tier monster, but in Rise, I just, it just doesn't really do it for me. And I'm not gonna lie, the armor and stuff, I, I'm not too much of a fan of like the sponge uh, armor and all that. But I mean, really, this is just something that it's like a gut feeling almost. He does have some cool attacks. 
and you know none of it is really like to the point where it's like annoying i mean he has back and forth moves where he just goes back and forth but like nothing's too too annoying but like i said this one it just in my gut like i i just wasn't feeling it i wasn't feeling royal ludroth this time but it's still ludroth so we're gonna put him in c Aknossum is uh it's a little bit tough putting him where i'm going to put him because I definitely want Eknossum to be higher. But the thing that takes away from Eknossum for me is the moveset just feels a little bit too slow. And I know that he's an earlier monster and everything like that, but it just feels like the moveset is way too slow, like, especially when he does his flips and stuff, and even the wing swings, like, they give you a nice tell to where you know that he's gonna be doing it, but. I feel like they might have just left it a little bit too long, and even the motions themselves are a little bit too slow for me. His attacks are awesome though. Like his fireballs, the bouncing fireballs and stuff, they are super, super, super cool. And then if you want to talk about an awesome design, Aknossum is awesome, for sure. One of the coolest monsters in Monster Hunter period, when we're talking about design. The giant crest and everything is so, so awesome. But that's the thing too is like even when you're kind of like beaten up on ignosum you can kind of see the wear and tear on the crest and I, I think that was really cool and the detail everything is really great about ignosum but that move set is what kind of you know what i mean kind of just doesn't do it for me so much but as far as his armor his weapons everything like that the knight type theme with his weapons like especially the lance one of the coolest designs for sure but even his other weapons, they're all really, really cool. I'm going to put Ignosum in A. I really would want to put him in S tier just for like the design alone. But the fight itself, there's just... I don't even want to say that they're nitpicks because they're they're pretty big deals. As far as like uh, as many of these moves that are affected by the slowness. So yeah, I think we're going to put him in A. I'm good with that. Baroth is a monster for me. I feel like the design is really cool and just honestly the concept, I think it's a really cool monster, but I feel like it just has such a low ceiling. It's not even the fact that like they didn't do him justice or this or that, but I just feel like especially as far as the fight and moveset and whatnot, I feel like he's just kind of limited and has such a low ceiling that I, I, I don't know. I mean, like, he's not bad by any means, but especially in Rise, too, they kind of took away the fact that he would do his little teapot charge every two seconds, which is cool. But like I said, I mean, it feels like he still just has such a low ceiling. So even when he reaches his full potential, which I think that they did a really good job of in Rise, it's still really not that great of a monster for me in totality. And then his armor, I mean, the armor is really, really ugly to me, but it has very useful pieces, don't get me wrong, but just how it looks, not so hot. So I mean, with all of that being said, probably gonna put Baroth in C. Ah, uh, Kazu. Kazu, Kazu, Kazu. Okay, so I definitely was a Kazu defender as far as like some of the older games like For You and Gen U and everything like that. But in Rise, I, I can't really defend Kazu. It's just maybe it's the added mobility of the wire bug and everything like that. But it just feels really boring fighting Kazu and like probably one of the only fights outside of maybe like Lagombi that I actually dread having to do. So like if I need Kezu parts or something like that, I'm not exactly looking forward to it at all. So yeah, I'm probably gonna have to throw Kezu in D. And you know, the weapons are still cool. Like the dual blades are some of my favorite designs for a weapon period, but it's just not enough. And then my God, the, the armor and like, the armor even for your buddies and whatnot? No, just absolutely not. But yeah, Kezu in Rise especially, just not feeling it, so Kezu's gonna go in D. Bishaten, Bishaten, whatever it is. Bishaten, awesome, awesome, awesome monster design. Absolutely love it. Everything about it, honestly, the monster design is fantastic. And his weapons are some of the coolest weapons I've ever seen in Monster Hunter. The designs for those are fantastic. They did a really, really good job, especially one of my favorite weapons of his 
the switch axe. I feel like it's tough to make switch axes look really like unique and different, which actually they did a really good job in Rise. But as far as Bishaten's switch axe, mwah, absolutely perfect. But then when you talk about the fight itself, his mechanic, you know, of pulling out the fruits and everything, the flash fruits, the poison fruits, even probably one of my favorite moves in Rise 2, definitely up there, is his move where he kind of just like throws out all the fruits and whatnot. That's a move that I honestly can't wait until Rise comes out for PC because every single time he did that move, I could kind of tell that frames were starting to drop a little bit on the Switch. But he's a super cool monster. Fantastic new addition to the Monster Hunter franchise. Can't wait to see if we get some kind of like subspecies or something like that maybe if they end up doing that in Rise. Very cool. Very fun fight. Love it. Bishaten definitely going up in A. Rathian, I think in Rise is pretty solid. I think they did a good job with Rathian. I think it's a fun fight, honestly. I mean, nothing crazy or nothing really different that we haven't seen before from Rathian. But one of the things that they take away that I absolutely love that they did in Rise was the one frame tail spin. You actually have somewhat of a like tell for when she's going to do the tail spin now. If you're somebody that the last Monster Hunter game that you played was Gen Yu, I feel like you know what I'm talking about. Worldborn definitely had a tail as well, and you actually had time to dodge. But yeah, back in Gen Yu, that one frame tail spin, yeah, I mean, it, it was annoying very much. And even the lawnmower doesn't seem as bad in Rise, so I think they did a pretty good job. Um, even if you talk about the weapons, a lot of the Rathian weapons, I love the Insect Glaive, I love the Sword and Shield the look of them and even just like stats wise like them both a lot so we're gonna go ahead and put rathian we're gonna put her in b barioth is probably one of the monsters that i would say doesn't really change too much from game to game but in rise i feel like he's still a solid monster design wise you're really not going to get much better than barioth and that's been the case forever but in rise looks fantastic the fight is always fun he's always all over the place jumping around shooting ice tornadoes you know flying up and it's just a fun fight overall and that hasn't changed and it's one of those things to where it's like if it isn't broke don't fix it and they definitely did that with barioth and i'm happy to see that because he's been solid throughout the fran the entire history of the franchise that he's been in it's been solid gen Yu, whatever we're talking about worldborn all of it I really like Barioth. And then as far as a monster's weapons, from like top to bottom, honestly, Barioth has some pretty cool looking weapons. So Barioth is definitely going to be going in the A tier. Volvodon is, I honestly think, pretty much like Barioth in where it was something to where like if it isn't broken, don't fix it. It's another one that was solid already and they didn't do too, too much to change it. So that's good. But the fact that it's a paralysis monster as well, definitely love that. I, I kind of have like a bias towards status ailment monsters. I just really, really enjoy the fights. I enjoy status ailments, period, especially on my weapons. And with Volvodon, I think it was his charge blade that I made that I absolutely loved and used for pretty much most of, most of like the lower tier fights. But I love, love, love paralysis weapons and Volvodon. He gives you that and then some, and I truly appreciate that and the design of the monster and just his uniqueness. I really, really like Volvodon, but in saying that, I mean, you know, he's pretty, pretty smooth fight, you know, nothing that I would find too, too annoying. The tongue lash thing, you know, every now and then it'll get annoying, but like, as far as his fight goes, pretty solid, honestly, a solid medium, like low to middle tier monster. So we are definitely going to put Volvodon in the B category. Somnicanth is another new addition to the Monster Hunter franchise. Have to say, fantastic addition. Like I said previously with Volvodon, love status ailments, love status ailment monsters. Sleep, definitely right at the top of the list there. But Somnicanth in her uniqueness is where I really like her. 
you're not going to find a monster that has a similar fight to her. And even the mechanic of her pulling out stuff and kind of using it as a weapon, like the explosive shell thing and, you know, all of it. All of it. The recovery, the flash. Love every single bit of Somnicanth and the fight. But, I mean, even that, outside of, like, the items that she pulls out and everything, the fight is solid even when she's not using the sleep status. Even her splash, like her leap up in the air and slam, everything about the fight is really, really good. The design of the monster is cool, and I mean, you want to talk about seriously dope armor? Look no further than Somnicanth. And even her weapons, too, just top of the line. Top of the line design. I don't think that it's enough for me to put her into the S tier, but I'm gonna be honest, it's very, very close, like borderline s tier but i think somnicanth is going to be going in the a tier basarios uh not really a huge fan of basarios or gravios or you know either one of them but i will say in rise they definitely definitely improved upon the fight by having that heating mechanic to where if he's shooting out the lava from his chest, then his chest will heat up or warm up. Then you can actually hit him. Or if he shoots his fire beam, then you can hit his head. Very cool that they put that in. But if I'm being honest, still don't really care for the fight. And as far as like the monster's actual design or anything, not really anything that I'm in favor of. Don't really care for it too, too much. But I do have to say that that heating mechanic definitely moved it up for me. And I, I don't know, I feel like I would probably put Basarios in the C tier. And honestly, from where he used to be, like in the Gen U tier list and just how I feel about him in general, that's a pretty solid spot for him. So yeah, I'd say even with that heating mechanic improvement, still not a huge fan of the fight. So Basarios, we're gonna go ahead and put him in C. Toby Kadachi is a monster that absolutely got huge improvements in Rise. I feel like we all can pretty much remember him in Worldborn. Like, he was quick, he was agile, and, you know, if you didn't take it seriously, he probably would. You know, he'd kind of smack you around a little bit, but I don't really think that you needed to worry about carding or getting three carts when you hunted him, even for the first time. Now, when we're talking about Rise, you definitely had to worry about getting carded and you definitely had to worry about getting carded out because they took his fight and jacked it up to 11. They gave him even more speed, even more agility, and his moveset is fantastic. The tail slams, the spins, his little angled bite attacks, fantastic fight, super fun, challenging now. I love it and I don't know why there are people kind of like whining about Toby Kadachi because it's just top to bottom. It's a really fun fight now. And I love it. I could not love it more. He caught me off guard for sure. I was not expecting him to hit as hard as he did or to be as fast as he was because they really did. They really took the Worldborn Kadachi and really, really improved it. So yeah, as far as his weapons go too, I like him. You know what I mean? They tweaked the Worldborn design a little bit, so, you know, you still have that slap-on feel. But his bow, and how good that bow is, that alone, I mean, that's that's enough for me. But his fight is super fun. Actually has a challenge to it now. Toby and Rise definitely going in the S tier. Jair Totus, uh, he is definitely... A monster that when I saw he was going to be in Rise, my first question was, why? But, playing against him in Rise, it's definitely a big time difference. Not so much that I'm going to put him in some super high tier, but I definitely say that if you wanted to give a monster that came from like a previous game the like most improved player award or most improved monster, I feel like he would definitely be a candidate for it. I don't know if he would win it outright, especially with how good that they did with Toby, but J.R. Totus, he definitely got a big improvement in Rise. He doesn't feel like a pushover anymore. 
and it's not like if you tap him he automatically gets stunned anymore big difference from worldborn um in more of the mud manipulation that he can do that's good i feel like the fight isn't nearly as bad as it was before and it's actually somewhat fun you know it's not one that i'm gonna put uh, anywhere near the top of the list but definitely one that i don't dread anymore just because it's so boring but yeah definitely got an improvement still only gonna put him in about the c category though puke puke uh definitely another monster that got improvements when it comes from coming into the series in worldborn big improvement in rise i think i like the fact that they really focused a lot more on the poisonous aspect of puke puke and i think in rise they took a lot of inspiration from Coral Puke in Worldborn, like the spray that he does with his tail now for the poison smoke and everything, very much reminded me of the fight with Coral Puke, who was fantastic in uh, Worldborn. Do believe I put him in the S tier, but Puke definitely got a lot of good stuff from that. I can tell that they drew from that. And even like weapon wise, there's a couple of uh, Puke's weapons that I really, really like, the heavy bow gun especially, but this bad boy, I feel like he got a big improvement, and I think that is enough to put him in about the B tier. But he's solid. He's solid in the B tier. Big big moves. Big moves for Puke. And Janath in Rise. I think pretty much all of the world-born monsters, the ones that were introduced in it, I feel like they all got very good improvements in Rise. Anjanath, it feels like he's more versatile in Rise. Uh, I, I think the Worldborn Anjanath kind of like focused a little bit too much on like if you could avoid his fire attacks, you were pretty much solid. I didn't think there was anything too much that you had to worry about there. But now in Rise, he seems a lot more versatile. His attacks are kind of widespread. You're not a in a situation to where you just have to worry about his fire breath. You know, the uh, rock launch and everything, his tail slam. I love the addition of those into his moveset. I think it was a pretty cool, fun fight, honestly. Nothing too crazy, obviously, but even design-wise, I mean, Anjanath is super awesome. I mean, it's a fire-breathing T-Rex. What more do you want? But even when we're talking about, like, armor, his waist, the Anjanath waist is just absolutely fantastic that alone carries him up to a pretty high tier but like yeah everything about the fight loved it love the design of the monster like i said the waist one of the best if not the best definitely gonna put him in the b tier now from this point on we're definitely going to be getting into some monsters that i very very much love in every way and they're more going to be kind of like the borderline monsters that I either really, really, really love or just love. So there's going to be a lot of positivity coming from this point on. We're going to start with Mizutsune. And Mizutsune is a great monster. It was fantastic in Gen U. Absolutely loved the Deviant of Mizutsune, Soul Seer. Loved all of it. In Rise, that doesn't change. The only thing that I don't like so much in Rise, they, they fixed it a little bit from the demo, but I feel like the water sprays kind of happen a bit too much to the point where it kind of gets annoying, especially when he slides and does the water attack. Maybe it's just me and I don't have great luck with it, but it seems like it happens a little too frequently for me and it's just, it's just beyond annoying sometimes. But the monster design, Mizutsune is just super cool in every way. The bubble mechanic super dope love that status affliction whatever you want to call it but yeah i mean mizutane the weapons absolute top tier designs for mizutane's weapons the hunting horn of course by far one of my favorites so unique looking one of the best hunting horn designs in rise for sure and the armor of course looks super cool little bit disappointed that they kind of took away the like fox head how it kind of like covered your whole head like it did in Gen U. Kind of disappointing they took that away, but still, armor looks super dope, especially the way that you can change the colors and whatnot. Really, really cool. But right on the fence with Mizutsune right now. Think he's going to have to go in A tier for now, but very, very, very close to S tier. 
Now, this one might be a little bit surprising for people, but honestly, this is another monster that I feel like got drastically, drastically improved when it comes to its iteration in Rise. Rathalos is one of the most fun fights for me in Rise. His attacks are fantastic. His fire-breathing attacks, the ones where he kind of cocks his head back and then swoops in a straight line, Definitely one of the coolest attacks in Rise, period. But as far as, like, making it a fight that isn't super annoying and a fight that you absolutely dread, I think they did a very, very good job of doing that in Rise with Rathalos. It's kind of akin to how bad Silver Rathalos and, like, Gold Rath uh, Rathian were in Gen Yu and their transformation into Worldborn and how much better of a fight it was. For me, very similar thing happened between Worldborn, Rathalos, and Rise. He wasn't too, too bad in Worldborn, but still a bit annoying. Rise, I feel like they hit it right at the sweet spot and made this a very fun fight. And then as far as the armor, solid. You know, if you want some attack boost, even like Part Breaker, love the skills that are on the armor. The look of it is still really cool. I mean, Rathalos is a staple to the franchise for very good reason. And especially the fact that all of his weapons have element exploit, definitely, definitely more points towards Rathalos. I do think that he is very much on the fence as well, but he's gonna go into A tier. Nargakuga, Nargakuga, Nargakuga. This is another monster that throughout the different monster hunters, Never really had a problem with Nargakuga. I think that it's one of the monsters that punishes people a lot for being over aggressive and not taking how fast it can move into consideration and trying to play that off. He'll absolutely punish you if you do not take him seriously. And I love that. I love that in a fight. I love that in a monster. Nargakuga has been solid from day one. But if we're talking about the Rise Nargakuga, I think that he's absolutely fantastic and then some. Something that I really liked that they implemented and did really well with, they like perfected it and tweaked it, the creep. The creep that Nargakuga does like before his tail slam, everything, it's a perfect tell. You don't know exactly what he's going to be doing, if he's going to like do his little creep and then roar, or if he's going to do his creep and then tail slam. So I feel like you have a good enough tell to where it's not unfair or anything like that it's not like a one frame slam or anything even close to it so i think they did very very well with that and then if we're talking about nargakuga's weapons of course a lot of them are the best if not super top tier top three whatever you know and they're really really good and then if we talk about the armor the fact that you can get evade extender and evade window with a lot of the pieces the waist one of my favorites by far giving you two of that evade extender already along with that slot you can max it out easily but even if you just stick with the two absolutely fantastic especially in rise all that being said nargakuga definitely goes to s tier for me zenogre okay so i mean it, it's pretty much apparent off the rip that Zenogre is one of the coolest monsters in Monster Hunter period. Especially if we're talking about a design, it's uh, it, it's not even debatable. He's by far one of the coolest. And then when we talk about him in Rise, just as cool as he's ever been. Seriously, in the fight, super fun. It's great. It's awesome. His weapons, you know, as far as Thunder weapons go, usually they're pretty sweet, pretty dope. The one thing that I do not like about Zenogre and Rise, which is kind of like, it's ironic because it's also one of my favorite things. It's just something a little bit that they needed to tweak. And honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing it like in an update or something like that. The fact that it takes him so ridiculously long to charge and get to his charge state, that's, that's a bit of a bummer because honestly, Zenogre and his charge state is by far the coolest thing in Rise. As far as the monsters go and the looks and everything like that, Charged Up Zenogre is the coolest looking monster in Monster Hunter Rise. But that fact that it takes him so long to charge up, that just really, it, it's disappointing because he even has like sweet new moves added to his moveset. 
that little thunder shot that he does when he does his uppercut and his swoop. Absolutely love all of it. I really do. But that, that just one little tweak that they need to do, they need to make it so he charges a lot faster. It just takes way, way too long, way too easy to punish him during those moments. So honestly, for that alone, I feel like that drops him down from an S to an A for me. But that's still a really, really solid A and right on the fence. But yeah, I think I'm going to have to put Zenoger in the A category. Goss Harag. If you want to talk about a badass addition to the Monster Hunter franchise, look no further. He's unique, he's fun, and man, did he come in like a freaking Mack truck. The pin move, I mean, if you've fought Goss Rag and you've gotten pinned by him, that little swaggy walk that he does, that slow strut up to you when he's about to literally like decapitate you, so, so cool. And I absolutely love everything about this monster. When he goes from, you know, his little dual blade mode to his, you know, his blade and hammer, all that stuff. I love it. Even when he's just like in his kind of chill blue state to where it's more of like a feral monster. I love every single bit of this fight. Zero complaints with Goss Harag when it comes to his fight. And I mean, let's be real. The design, come on. Top tier. I don't know who was behind Goss Harag specifically, but they literally could not have done any better with this monster. And then when you talk about the weapon designs, literally the same. Literally the same. Super, super awesome weapon designs. The Lance might be one of my favorite designs in the game. Just liter literally top tier in every single category that you can think of for a monster. Literally top tier. Gosarog, it's an absolute no-brainer. S tier, for sure. Diablos. Now, I think that this is a monster as well, that from the very first Monster Hunter that he was in to all the way up now to Rise, I think it's been a very consistent monster, always been a fun fight, and honestly, in a lot of the games, Diablos was kind of the test monster for me, to where if I wanted to try out a new set, if I wanted to get better with a weapon, or just kind of test out some different moves or especially in rise like switch skills diablos was the monster that i picked because it's an absolutely fantastic balance of fun and challenging he was de he definitely hits really hard in rise 2 which he's kind of kept that throughout the series which is good they it was another one of those if it ain't broke don't fix it kind of monsters and they did really well with that the fact that they added that tail slam for him that launches the boulder and it's even like a mini pin. Really, really cool. Very Bloodbath Diablos-esque. If they would have given him the kind of like jump up and screwdriver into the ground or any of the like Sonic Blast stuff of Bloodbath, he probably would be S tier for me, honestly. But who knows, you know, maybe an Apex Diablos comes down the line and you know, we get to relive those Bloodbath days. But for now, I would have to say that I'm putting Diablos in the A tier as well. Armor's really good too, as far as like, you know, they even like threw an offensive guard and guard and everything into it. Some of the marathon runner, really, really cool armor. The weapons are fantastic for like bludgeoner sets and using brutal strike, really solid all around. Definitely like right on the fence with A and S tier. But for now, Diablos definitely going solid A tier. Tigrex. When we talk about Tigrex, it's definitely a monster as well that I had fun throughout the series fighting. Even in 4U, uh, you know, it was kind of annoying, but at the same time, I mean, it was still definitely challenging and a good enough balance between fun and challenging to where definitely don't think I would complain about it too much. But Worldborn, fantastic, absolutely awesome fight. From Worldborn to Rise, there's not a huge difference with Tigrex. Kind of feels very much the same to me. But added, when, uh, added with the uh, mobility that we've gotten in Rise, I feel like with Tigrex, it kind of makes it even more fun. Like it's not a detriment to the fight in any way. I think it does kind of like take the fun level up a little bit. But Tigrex's moveset is always really cool. 
The only thing that I don't like is his like spin move that he does. I feel like it just randomly generates what's actually going to hit you and what won't because it seems like somehow I'm getting hit by like its jaw when it's like nowhere near. It's just, it's goofy. It's goofy. But honestly, as far as Tigrix goes, it's going to be a monster that I'll absolutely love no matter what game we're talking about. And I hope that it's one of those staples that continues to be in the games. But as far as like the fight, the design, everything, just a solid monster overall. I really, really like his switch axe. Shout out to Echoes for uh, telling me about that. Love the exhaust file switch axe. Really, really cool. His armor, I'm a huge fan of earplugs. So being able to throw on that chest and waist and be able to just have earplugs. I've been doing that with the bow actually to keep from getting roared out of like aerial shots and stuff really enjoying it so tigrex of course he's gonna be a solid a very very solid a tier almudron oh baby almudron so the sleepy grandpa mud snake whatever you want to call him almudron this is something that i'm absolutely not going to debate you can put whatever you want in the comments Almudron's an absolute S tier. I'm just I'm just gonna hurry up and get that out of the way. But you want to talk about a fun fight and a monster with a wide move set and just an absolutely fantastic, even cinematic experience. Every single time I fight Almudron, I leave the fight just thinking, "Holy shit, man! Did they do this fight super well?" And this is another monster. That as far as like, it kind of sort of the same as Toby Kadachi, how people are really complaining about the fight and whining about it. Yeah, I got to admit some of the moves, like it's kind of hard to tell what he's about to do. There's not a lot, a lot of like tells, but as far as that goes, it's really not that bad. And then, I mean, look at his tail, his giant cannonball wrecking ball, whatever on the end of his tail with the mud. That's so cool. And then the move when he flings up the mud and fires it down on you, brings up the pillars of mud and really takes advantage of the new mechanic of the wire bug. Almudron is a perfect monster for this iteration of Monster Hunter. Absolutely fantastic. Everything about Almudron is awesome. His design is fantastic. The fight is fun and varied. Super, super cool. And then if you wanna talk about his armor, the armor is absolutely awesome, especially for like charge blade, switch axe users. Super cool. The look of the armor is absolutely awesome. And his weapons, beyond dope. The dual blades, some of my favorite dual blades in the game. Seriously, just from top to bottom, Almadron is awesome. This is one that I absolutely won't even debate. Stop crying about Almadron. It's a fun fight. It's a great fight. S tier for sure. Rajang. Now, this is a monster that I think when it comes to Rajong and Furious Rajong, I think Furious Rajong is by far the best iteration of Rajong or, you know, any type of Rajong in the entire series. And that's not to be said lightly because honestly, even in the previous series, I was not too, too much of a fan for you. I thought it was awful fighting him and I feel like that kind of has to do more so with the clunkiness of the controls and whatnot and even like the camera and then when you go into Gen Yu, still really not much of my favorite fight and I didn't exactly look forward to it but then you step into Worldborn I would fight Rajong over and over and over and over again and if you were part of the streams when I was doing a lot of the chill hunts in uh, Worldborn yeah you, you would know just how much I love this monster. Best monkey by far will forever be the best monkey. And the fact that he, I think he actually does right now, has like the highest threat level out of all of the monsters. It's just so perfect. And then when we talk about the intros, he for sure has one of the best intros, if not the best intro in Rise. And as far as the fight goes, I think they did a very good job of keeping him, you know, as a punishing monster and hitting like a Mack truck and going through his cycles of like 
Saiyan and Super Saiyan and Super Super Saiyan, all that stuff. I think they nailed it in just how frequent that it happens too. But the fact that they give you solid windows for punishment as well, a very good iteration of Rajong and Rise, definitely going to put him in the S tier. And then his legs giving those two points a critical boost, it's a staple in a lot of people's uh, builds, I'm sure, especially if you're going for like meta sets. So yeah, Rajong, solid S tier. King of the monsters in Monster Hunter because he's just that badass. But yeah, I definitely put Rajong S tier. Now we get to the big dog or cat or whatever you want to call it. We get to Magnamala, the flagship of Rise and honestly, very, very deserving of being the flagship. You want to talk about a monster that is done right, look no further. Magnamalo, the design, I know that this was something that people were kind of, it, it's a bit polarizing as far as talking about his design. I am of the kin that absolutely loves the design of Magnamalo. Some people thought it was a little too over the top. Some people thought it was way too frontierish for the main series and everything. I, myself, do not mind the frontier designs at all, and this is included. If you consider it to be a frontier design, I don't care. I love it. I absolutely love the design of Magnamalo. And then when we talk about the fight, super, super awesome fight. Very fun. Perfect balance of fun and challenging. They did a really, really good job with the moveset. High flying, fast, speedy, powerful. Every single word that you can use to describe a great fight, you can pretty much put that with Magnamalo. Especially the little roll over and like how it kind of like trips over and rolls and then slams into you as like a recover. Love that. Very much love that. The Hellfire mechanic itself, I like that too. Kind of wish they would make it a little bit more different than Blast Blight. I know it is a little bit, but it feels a little too similar. It almost feels like just Blast Blight, except for it's purple. So, you know, doing that would be great, but as far as Magnamala goes, seriously so awesome. So, so awesome. And I am a fan of Blast weapons and the uh, status ailment of Blast, but like, I really do. I really hope that they kind of give it Hellfire more of a, a difference between the two because, you know, it kind of would have been cool if his weapons it's themselves kind of had like a Hellfire status or whatever that you could use and have some kind of different mechanic. But until then, still really, really cool. Great fight. Great design. The weapons look awesome. And like I said, Blast Weapons definitely at the top of my list. And then if we're talking about the armor, some pretty solid pieces, especially like the head and the uh, hands, as far as giving you that handicraft. And then Hellfire Cloak, you know, it's not anything that's going to make or break a meta build. Well, you know, it's not going to make a meta build, but still a fun mechanic to play around with. So yeah, if you haven't tried that out, go ahead and give it a shot. But I'm going to go ahead and say all of that and wrap it up with putting Magnamalo in the S tier. Now, as far as the serpents go, Ibushi, I feel like this isn't one that I can exactly accurately rate on a tier list right now, just because it's tied to a rampage. And that's honestly why I'm not doing any of the Apex monsters, because I feel like they're all very much held back by the rampage. So I just didn't even bother putting them on the tier list. But as far as him, you know, being his own separate monster and being a new introduction to it, I do really enjoy the move set, the fight and the mechanics and stuff. But I don't think that I've gotten an accurate enough reading of the fight just because there's so many things that you can do, like big old explosion artillery that you can use and it's really easy to do so so right now if we're going to talk about ibushi as far as his implementation in rise right now i would probably have to put ibushi in c tier and it sucks because you know even his armor i kind of like the aesthetic of it i mean it's not my favorite armor but i feel like it's an armor that very much relates to the monster really well I mean, the skills and everything on it, I mean, if you know, you know. 
but uh the weapons they all pretty much look pretty dope still just having him tied to the rampage feel like it really really holds ibushi back hopefully we'll get a chance to fight outside of the rampage and honestly if we do i feel like he's gonna very easily at least jump to like an a tier but until then how it is now i'd have to say i put rampage ibushi in the c tier and now we come to the big mama herself the final boss so far in rise narwa the thunder serpent goddess all i can say about this monster is wow just just so awesome i mean the design of the monster itself super cool i absolutely love it but where narwa shines is the fight the fight is absolutely fantastic atel ka was an absolutely badass fight in gen u especially for a final boss narwa i think slightly edges that out for me and that's saying a lot because i absolutely loved atel ka in that fight but the fight with narwa just seems like something ripped right out of azura's wrath and i love it i love how how big it feels, how cinematic it feels. The moment just feels so tense the entire time. The attacks that she fires off at you, especially those punches where she fires out the electric rings. Everything is just so, so good. It almost feels to me like a near automata fight. And that's in the absolute best way that I could mean that. Very fun, very active. Having the pillars come out of the ground and like the different things that you can jump on to get to the artillery. I feel like this is the way that they should start to implement siege fights. You know, to where you're active the entire time. You're using, you know, your weapons and things like that. And they don't make you focus specifically on the siege weaponry. But if you use it right, it helps out a lot. You're not forced to. But it's definitely good to in a strategic sense. I like that a lot. And I hope that if they implement any more siege monsters, they kind of take heed to what they did with Narwa here and really pick off of that. Because it was so fun. Definitely the best like final boss fight that I've ever had in a Monster Hunter series. I know that I haven't played all of them, but still, definitely my favorite right now. Really, really cool monster. And even as far as like the story ties and everything, I love it. Weapons, you know, they're, they are what they are. You know, I don't think that there's any that stand out in my eyes. And even design wise, I mean, they're, they're all right. You know, armor looks pretty cool. The buddy armor, definitely love it for both the Palamute and Palico. But I mean, as far as that goes, you know, not exactly my cup of tea, but it, with the fight and how great it is alone, Narwa automatically goes to the S tier. It's not even close. S tier for sure. Probably my favorite. Probably my favorite boss fight in the Monster Hunter series. And I don't think that that's going to change anytime soon. Definitely need to take, take inspiration from this. If they're ever going to put Siege Monsters back in, please don't ever do anything like Zora Magdaros again. Look at what you did with Narwa and how fantastic it is and go from there. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. I feel like Rise has an extremely, extremely good roster. Probably one of the more heavy-ended uh, tier lists that I've made as far as, like, you know, the S tier and A tier range. And that was for a good reason. I think that the monsters that they added in this game are absolutely fantastic. And honestly, even the older monsters that they've put in, a lot of them, they didn't tweak too, too much, which was great. And the slight additions that they did make made all the difference, especially talking about monsters like Nargakuga or the ones that they seem to do a lot of changing and uh, fixing with Toby. Just great all around. A seriously solid roster. I really can't complain at all. And we're about to get an update that's going to bring a lot of monsters into the game. I cannot wait to see what they bring into this. Such a great roster. They did a really good job. Like I said, probably one of my more positive tier list, honestly. But yeah, that's it. And if you guys want to tell me I'm wrong, feel free to do so in the comments. Because this is definitely a video that I'm going to watch for the comments. 
because I absolutely want to discuss this and talk to you guys and see how you felt about the roster and rise. Discord and Patreon links are in the description below, so if you'd like to support the channel or if you'd like to join our awesome Discord community and get involved in some of the speedrun events that we're going to have going on or just group up with some awesome hunters, feel free to join at the link below. If you like the video, please feel free to let me know with a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already for more Monster Hunter, Rise, and other gaming content, streams, reviews, guides, and more. Have a good night, happy hunting, and I will see you guys in the next video.